welcome to our Jugger to Pairs here with another video when today I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on the new Xtool D5S. It's a new DIY diagnosis can tool developed by Xtool but that is also made for the industry professional and they were kind enough to send me one so that I can let you guys know what I think about it. I'm going to plug it into a car, see if I can see some live data, some graphs, some special functions because this tool can do a lot. So here's a quick view of the scan tool. The scan tool has its uh, cord to connect to the OBD2 port. It's fairly long so that you can still move within the cabin. And it also has a very, very, very compact screen, yet you can still see a pretty amount of information. The uh, heavy duty handles and it's very portable. Feels very good in the hands and it's completely touch screen. So let's go connect it to a car. Okay, let's go ahead and enter this vehicle. We're working on a 2016 Chevy uh, Tahoe, I believe this is. And uh, let's go ahead and connect the scan tool. Now while we wait for that to load, one thing about this tool is that it's very compact, very handheld, feels really good in the hands, and it's compatible with over 10,000 vehicles that use the 12 volt system. You know, minivans, cars, trucks, medium duty trucks, you know, um, hybrids and things like that. So anything that uses the 12 volt system. Another great thing about this tool is that it's able to perform about 15 service functions and reset procedures. I'm going to list those uh, on the screen here in the video. Um, and that's very, very great for the size of the tool. Another useful feature in this tool that I'm going to show you when I start using the tool is that it's able to, um, of course, view data PIDs, but it's able to view four data PIDs in graph mode at one time. This tool can also detect four systems, meaning, you know, most tools of this size, especially most of the time only detect PCM or TCM, which is powertrain control module or transmission control modules. Some can do PCM, TCM, anti-lock brakes. One great thing about this tool is that it can do um, engine control systems, the PCM, it can do transmission control systems, it can do anti-lock brakes, ABS, it can do airbag as well. You can go into the system of the airbag, the SRS, and also on, sus on the systems that are applicable, it can also do the electronic park and brake uh, maintenance procedure that we all know for electronic park and brake have to be done when you're doing um, uh, the rear brakes. You have to put the vehicle in maintenance mode, so that's also another very, very powerful feature. This tool can also have an expandable 32 gigabytes of storage so that anything you want to record with the tool, uh, you can store it, you can export it, um, live data and things like that. Great, great, great thing to have in this tool as well. This tool also has a lifetime upgrade, so you don't have to worry about paying for an update. This tool um, automatically does lifetime updates, which is really, really great considering you're going to have this tool for a long period of time. And technology advances every single day. They release new systems, new upgrades, new updates. Okay, so we got the tool connected here. We haven't turned the ignition switch on the vehicle yet. Uh, one good thing is that this tool charges on its own as soon as it's connected to the OBD2 port. That's pretty cool. You have about six things you can do here first. Okay, you got the auto scan, which the tool detects the vehicle automatically. And this, wor this works better with uh, late model vehicles due to the fact that they use a very, very much faster communication network. All vehicles now use CAN communication compared to about 10, 15 years ago where some vehicles were using LIN or one wire communication systems. This works better when you have a higher communication um, speed. So that's the auto scan. Now the diagnosis is if you don't want to uh, let the tool do the scanning, you want to go ahead and go to diagnosis. You're gonna choose the vehicle that you want. Of course, we're in America here. Now we're gonna go to Asian vehicles and it's gonna show you all the Asian vehicles. Then you go to China, Europe, and so forth to check the different vehicles. And you're gonna choose your vehicle in question, go through the process to detect whatever vehicle you have here, okay, compared to the auto scan. Okay, you have the OBD2 function, which you're able to do uh, check codes, view generic um, OBD2 related data. Okay, uh, compared to the diagnosis, diagnosis you're able to see a lot thorough, a lot more information, a lot more data uh, compared to the OBD2, which is just generic OBD2 data. You're able to see the different um, OBD2 modes. Okay, that's very uh, very interesting. Always going to the modes on the OBD2, and you have the special functions here. Now, if I go to it, this is all the stuff that I uh, laid out on the screen earlier. 
the bleeding, the ABS reset, EGR learn, electronic parking brake, airbag, stuff like that. Maintenance light, EGR coding, window initialization, headlight adjustment, and stuff like that. Okay. And if I go back, this is where the update um, feature is. In case you want to see if there's any available updates on the tool, you go to updates. Okay. But we're going to go back because basically this is going to take you to a little screen. I'm going to go back. Now, if you go to more, you're able to see that this is just where your account is. You know, if you have a workshop, you can go ahead and put your uh, shop name, phone number, and stuff like that. So, if you want to print a diagnostic report, it can have your shop name, phone number, address, things like that. Make it look professional for the customer. Okay, you have an account, which is basically your email address, the how you use to register the tool, and things like that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the ignition switch on. I'm going to go ahead and go to auto scan. I want this to detect the vehicle automatically. Okay, let's do the auto identification. Okay, let's do the automatic detection. There we go, 2016 Chevy Tahoe. It gives you the VIN number. Very, very quick. This is a 2016, so um, of course it's going to be fairly quick due to the communication. Okay, turn the ignition switch on. Now, I can go to system selection if I want to just go straight to the uh, system I want to go to. The automatic scan detects all modules and gives you codes for all modules. I'm going to go to the auto scan. Okay, as you can see, we look like we have a problem with the electronic brake control module, the ABS, because it's uh, marked red. Let me go back. Yes. Let me go to system selection. As you can see, you have engine control module, transmission control module, the parking brake, electronic parking brake. You have the uh, inflatable restraint, which is the airbag, and the parking brake control module. So this is what this vehicle offers here. Okay. So I'm going to go to engine control module. Even though there could be something potential in the ABS, I want to check engine control module um, system. It's communicating. Okay, now you can read ECU information, you can read codes, clear codes, live data, and you can read freeze frame, which is very, very crucial information when detecting a fault in terms of when the fault happened. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if we have any codes, which I don't think so. So no DTCs found. Let's go back. Now let's go, let's turn the vehicle on. Okay, we're gonna go to live data. Okay, we're gonna go to gives you a good category. That's all. That's always great when you're able to see categories and not just have all the data pits all at once. I'm gonna go ahead and choose fuel trim data. I want to see the refresh rate in this tool. I want to see how fast it responds to signal changes. Okay, now you're able to see all the data pits here for the trims down here it's a lot of data pits now the tool is able to let you see four data pits simultaneously at one time which is really good um, let me choose go ahead and choose the uh, short-term and long-term field trims on both banks once I choose them by pressing these arrows I can do show selected now I'm able to see them okay the vehicle is already in closed loop so the fuel trims are all already compensating already uh, <clears throat> being taken into account in terms of fuel control fuel trims actually look great now I didn't expect them to be bad on this vehicle but let me just accelerate and see how fast the trims change on this tool actually pretty good you know of course the more data pits you show on a tool no matter if it's xtool snap on maco even the best tools the smaller amount of data pits that you're showing on the screen the better the resolution rate the better the refresh rate okay uh, so this is actually pretty good as you can see 
that probably got out of, out of a close loop because I, I kind of went almost wide open throttle there, but very, very impressed by that. Now, let me go back. Now, I'm going to deselect the short term fuel trims and I want to see the O2 sensors. I want to see what they're doing. There you, you see how the fuel system is loop, closed loop. I want to see. I want to see something that's changing. I want to see signal change here, okay? Because if I put a data pit that's just constantly being in one value, it's not really going to show me. As we can see here, the O2 sensors, traditional switching style O2 sensors, the data is refreshing pretty well, okay? As you can see, the upstream sensors are switching rich to lean like they're supposed to to regulate fuel control the downstream sensors normally stay at a voltage depending on how the uh, calic converter is um, doing its job most of the time it's at a uh, higher voltage which as you can see 0 0.6 0 0.6 and you have both of these signal changes one great thing about this tool is that you can put graph and you can by pressing that button you can see the graphing in real time Okay, of course, you can only do one at a time. I know earlier I said you can do four simultaneously. I was wrong. You can do one at a time. So if I want to do this one and then do this one, it's going to close out the one on top to get to the one on the bottom, which is still very, very, very good, though, because as you can see, if I accelerate, you're able to see the change pretty rapidly, which is really, really good. You want to see how well that responds because that's able to tell you or aid you into finding the problem because you're able to see signal change in real time compared to a lag. Let me do like a couple of revs just so I can see how nice, really nice. Okay, let me go back. Now I want to see the mass airflow sensor because we always want to see the grams per second on the mass airflow sensor. I want to see throttle position, accelerator pedal position, and MEP sensor. Now let's show those. Okay, most of the time mass airflow sensor grams per second is normally engine displacement and idle. Okay, which is pretty there. Almost there. It doesn't have to be completely but just a, a, a rule of thought. Okay, we got 10% throttle. As I open the throttle, you're able to see a change there. Okay, now I'm going releasing the throttle. Let me do a what? Let me do it rapidly. Nice. You see the accelerator pedal position. Great, great tool to get out of your toolbox. Compact you know connected to a vehicle and start and start seeing data start um, seeing what you need to do okay entering the systems really really good let me go back let me enter the ABS because I know we had a a problem there we're gonna read the code and see what we got there brake booster large vacuum leak detected wow it's crazy because my fuel trim numbers look pretty good Oh, this must have a um, its own vacuum pump. This does not use engine vacuum. I believe this engine has its uh, dedicated vacuum pump that's being run by the uh, by the serpentine belt. So that's probably why my fuel trim numbers were okay. Um, so I'm saying there's a brake booster large vacuum leak detected. Now let me see if I got freeze frame for this, just so I can show you. Oh yeah, let's see. Let's view data. Okay, nice. So I was able to see what my data pits were for this code. Really, really good information. Now it doesn't really tell me anything to help me with this code, but it's good that I'm able to see some data for this, you know, which is going to be also for the engine as well. Really, really useful feature, definitely. Now I got to go see and see if there's a vacuum line disconnected or um, the one that's connected to the pump the auxiliary pump on the uh, serpentine belt the brake pump that provides the uh, the brake vacuum to the booster 
But uh, yeah, I'm really impressed by this tool. I'm really impressed how you're able to just go back very fairly quickly, go to a system, communicate with the system, read codes fairly quickly. As you can see, this is what I'm doing now, going back. And of course, take into consideration that this is a CAN bus communication system, okay? So if you are using this on a 2002, 2003 with a different communication network, it's gonna be a, take a little longer for the vehicle to uh, respond, for the uh, scan tool to respond, not because of scan tool fault, but because it's just a slower uh, communication network, which uh, takes longer for, for data, for data refresh rate and things like that, okay? Okay guys, unfortunately, I don't have time to uh, show you the actual special functions to do one by one everything, but, but you can go to the main menu by going to the here and you can go to special functions and play around with this whenever you need to do um, a reset okay it's pretty straightforward you know menu to menu to menu just do what this tool tells you to but I just wanted to show you how powerful this was how ease how easily you can enter module to module and things like that so yeah I'm actually very impressed with this tool I'm gonna use it a lot thank you X tool for sending me this tool um, really really impressed with it and uh, I hope you guys are impressed with it too. I'm gonna drop down a link for a discount on my uh, on the description where you can click on it and you can get a discount on the uh, on the tool. I'm gonna um, write the discount percentage here on the screen because I'm not sure at this moment. And there you can pick up your own. And I believe right now it's going for about 150 bucks or 169.99 I believe. Um, and yeah, try it out for yourself. Really really good tool. And I'm definitely gonna use it when I need to. Uh, Grab a tool quickly, not bulky, not a big tool, connect it, see live data, do some maintenance resets, stuff like that. Um, special functions, really great. Very happy with it.